All right, guys, welcome to assignment four video instructions. I'm going to show you how to tackle this assignment. So once again, go to your classwork tab. You're going to look for module four online learning and assignment four that is suggested due date of Friday, April 24th. It's just a suggestion. You work on it when you can work on it. OK, come down here and click view assignment. All right, let me walk you through this. So first thing you're going to do is watch the video instructions called step one assignment four instructions. You're doing that right now with me. OK, so you're on step two. You're going to watch the vocabulary linked below called Edpuzzle five types of structures. OK, once you come down here, here it is, five types of structures. You click on it. And it is going to log you right in if you are already logged into Google. If not, use your Google credentials to log in your Wake County Google account to log in. OK, so when it, if it asks you to log in, click log in with Google and do that. If you get hung up on this step, ignore it. Just skip it. It's just a fun little review video. You know, I love some of vocabulary rap. Uh, it's a good way to just summarize some text structure. OK, then you're going to watch this PowerPoint down here. It's called Step 3A. It's a video, a four minute video of me walking you through text structure. OK, um, and then here is in Step 3B, just that same PowerPoint. OK, so you don't need to do step 3B unless you didn't love the video and you just want to look at it in silence without me um, talking to you in it. OK, once you get all that done and you feel good about text structure, I'm not asking you to memorize anything. I'm just asking you to be familiar with text structure, the word, how an article is made up, how a story is created. You go on to article or step four and read the article. Step four. What should you know about your brain? OK, remember. Our articles are linked up here, okay? Your copy of the article is located under the Your Work box in Google Classroom. As you read, okay, in the document, I want you to do two things. Highlight keywords and just pay attention to the bold words and the italicized information. So as you come across a keyword, you're going to highlight it, okay? And then you just pay attention to the bold words. You notice I've already highlighted a couple things for you, which I'll go over in a second. But so say you're reading, you're like, although the brain is an amazing organ, you're like, oh, I didn't know the brain was an, was an organ. That's interesting, right? You can come over here, you highlight what you want to do, and you can choose a sweet color, okay? Then that's what you highlighted. You felt like that was important. Go ahead and read through this article, all right? Once you get done, Reading the article, it is lengthy, so give it your best effort. Take it in chunks. You come over here and you do this graphic organizer. It is step five. You complete the graphic organizer called step five text structure graphic organizer. Okay, it'll have your name on it in the you work box, and you've got a couple tasks here. Okay, it's our text structure graphic organizer. Okay, you're talking about the five types of informational text structure. Process and sequential, problem solution, cause and effect, compare and contrast, main idea. You're focused on keywords. Remember, there can be multiple structures in the same text. And informational text, which is what we are reading, usually includes headings and subheadings, which is what our article does. Okay. So as you read, you'll notice that here is a subheading. You'll notice there's no spot for a gist over here this time around, but it's okay. Don't you worry. You still need a gist. You'll put your gist here instead, okay? We just wanted to give you a space to think. So if you want to read this first section, you're like, okay, I read it. I understand it. I'll put my gist here. Then you can go on to the second gist, RAS the gatekeeper, RAS the gatekeeper, the reticular activating system. You read this section, okay? And then you come over here and write a gist in. Then you look, oh, I'm doing the limbic system, right? So you'll go back to the article and read about the limbic system, which is right here. OK, then you'll go to the amygdala, the hippocampus, and you'll keep going down. So you're going to when you're all said and done, you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six gist statements. OK, so it makes it a little bit easier to read it that way. So when you get done, here's the main task that I want to see. OK, you read the article, you highlighted any keywords, you completed the gist statements up here on this worksheet as you read. OK, and then you're going to work on vocabulary. OK, you need to put information for both columns and that needs to come from this article not an online source okay i've done an example for you okay so the vocab word that you have to define right out the gate is prefrontal cortex so i went up and found the article and that's what i've highlighted for you already 
okay? The prefrontal cortex, what we might call the thinking brain, which can consciously process and reflect on information, okay? The lower and automatic brain that we might call the reactive brain, which reacts and it keeps on going, okay? So I put some information here, described as the thinking brain, where information is consciously processed and reflected on. Look, came right out of here, okay? That was our definition, all right? And then I ask you for ways that the prefrontal cortex affects your brain, affects the brain function. And that is what I've highlighted, okay? When you are not stressed by negative emotions, you can control what information makes it into your brain, right? Information only accesses the prefrontal cortex when your stress level is low, okay? So I kind of paraphrase that. You're welcome to take it right out of there if you want to. Second one says, when you're anxious, sad, frustrated, or bored, your brain filters conduct sensory information from the world around you into your reactive brain. There's another good point that I want to include. That shows me how the prefrontal cortex affects the brain. So I rewrote it as when your stress level is high or you're sad or angry, your brain will filter out sensory information and react to it by fighting and ignoring it. This is what happens when somebody makes you mad and you can't think straight at all. You just want to hit them, right? That's your prefrontal cortex filtering out that information you need and, and you're going to make a bad decision, right? The next one down here, it says, if information gets routed to this reactive brain, it's unlikely your brain will truly process the information or remember it. So I wrote it down here. Your thinking brain or your prefrontal cortex will not be able to access or learn new information when your stress level is high, right? So it makes sense why teenagers are making some decisions that you are sometimes, right? It makes sense why you're like, I don't even know why I did that. It just happened when I ask you, why did you do that, right? That's because your prefrontal cortex is still developing. Your brain is still developing. So I want to know, in summary, after as you read this article, give me your gist statements about each part. Then you come down here and you give me a definition for each part of the brain. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven things that need definitions. Then you're going to tell me how that particular thing, how the limbic system affects brain function. Okay? The final thing you do on this text structure graphic organizer is you answer these two questions. What is the primary text structure of this article? And how does this way of organizing information connect to the author's purpose? Okay, so to answer those two questions, you're probably going to have to go back to this PowerPoint right here. Okay, and maybe rewatch this video. When you're done with everything, when you are done, make sure you come up here and click whoop, turn in. Okay, and then I'll get a copy of everything and you are done with week two.